storm breaks in full final fury on the German Rhine. Swiftly exploiting successes, three American divisions smash into the battered heart of Cologne. The ancient cathedral looks down through blind, staring eyes upon a great city torn to shreds, smashed into ruins, but still defended by fanatics. Here is the beginning of the vengeance visited on a people who carried terror and destruction to others without reason. The German Tiger tank is hit. The daring combat cameraman films the scene as the Nazi crew scrambles out of its flaming interior. Cologne is taken, its wreckage symbolizing the certain expiation of Germany's crime. Suddenly the world is thrilled by the news of a startling achievement. A bold spearhead of Lieutenant General Courtney H. Hodges' First Army captures the Rhine Bridge at Remarket. The startled Nazis react with desperate efforts to destroy it. In the meantime, a pontoon bridge is thrown across the river. When the Remagen Bridge is finally knocked out, the First Army's communications are secure. The final mission of the great bombing fleet. All remaining key rail and communication centers are ripped to shreds. The great assault in force on the Rhine barrier comes with the crossing of the river by the British 2nd, Canadian 1st, and American 9th Army. Winston Churchill insists on a personal invasion of Hitler's inner fortress. Now the airborne avalanche. Down upon the embattled right, 40,000 men leap to disrupt the German war machine in front of the great allied Rhine bridgehead. From other transports come ammunition, food, medical supplies for the airborne army. The once rigid framework of the Western Front has been sagging for weeks. One sharp blow brings it crashing down and the disintegration of the German Wehrmacht begins. Here, for the first time, the American Army's secret rocket launchers are seen in destructive action. Thirty miles east of Berlin, Russia's Katusha rockets suddenly flame into action. The first white Russian army group, veterans of Stalingrad, drive from their bridgehead on the Oder toward Berlin. Marshal Gregory K. Zukov directs the smashing attack. The military grand strategy devised at Yalta is now in full operation to squeeze the life out of Germany. An historic moment arrives when the American and Russian armies make contact on the Elbe, 75 miles south of Berlin. U.S. Major General Reinhardt crosses the river in a racing shell as all bridges are down and boats in this area have been seized by terrified Nazi soldiers and civilians fleeing from the Russian army. General Reinhardt and Major General C.R. Hubner meet their Russian alliance amid happy fraternization between Ivan and G.I. Joe. Now the mighty American tide rolls into Nuremberg. The Seventh Army holds the review where Hitler's great rallies were held. Here, thousands once gathered to bellow Sieg Heil when Hitler screamed. Now the vast expanse is empty except for three American soldiers who have a job to do. Watch the symbol. the once mighty fortress of Nazi Germany now feels the final blows that have progressively stunned, demoralized, and almost filled its heartbeat. On every side, the last ditch centers of fanatic resistance are hemmed in, hopelessly beaten. The end has come. Berlin, the city where Hitler planned a total war, becomes a total wreck, shattered and pulverized by months of unceasing air raids, ground into a vast pile of lifeless rubble by Russian bombardment. The fate of the German capital was sealed when the Soviets launched their offensive across the Oder River. The Nazis boasted that they would turn Berlin into a Stalingrad. They failed. The city becomes a jumble of stone, the greatest wreck in human history, 
unfolding in vast tombs beneath its ruins, unnumbered victims of its fate. And Moscow celebrates with mass guns. Mussolini is captured by Italian partisans, and 50,000 screaming men and women of newly liberated Milan swarm around the body of the hated fascist who lies in the public square, riddled by the bullets of a firing squad. Thus an era of treachery and deceit ends without glory. The beginning of the end comes suddenly in northern Italy at Caserta. The representative of Colonel General von Piedenhoff, German commander in Italy, signs the document of unconditional surrender, throwing wide open the Brenner Pass to southern Germany. Thus, the oft-forgotten British and American armies in Italy achieved the honor of forcing the first big Nazi crack up. <music> Lieutenant General W.D. Morgan, Chief of Staff to General Alexander Sines. Now in North Germany, south of Hamburg, Field Marshal Bernard L. Montgomery receives a Nazi delegation. They assemble in his headquarters. The German delegation will now sign this, uh, this paper. Admiral Hans George von Friedenburg surrenders all German armies in North Germany, Holland, Denmark, and Norway. Montgomery signs for the triumphant finish of a fighting crusade all the way from the gates of Egypt. At Reims, France, a certain red schoolhouse becomes famous. Colonel General Gustav Jodl, Chief of Staff of the German Army, arrives at General Eisenhower's headquarters. These Nazis had delayed to avoid surrendering to the Russians, but General Eisenhower gives them a sharp ultimatum, sign or the war will go on. The great moment arrives as the surrender papers are prepared. Jodl, authorized representative of Admiral Dönitz, temporary head of the German government, signs the surrender document, the final capitulation of the Nazi state. So ends Nazism, the scientific organization of all that is evil and bestial in man. The chief of staff for General Eisenhower, Lieutenant General Walter Bedell Smith, signs. Victory celebrations begin at General Dwight D. Eisenhower's headquarters, and Soviet officers join in. The general is presented with a historic pen. London celebrates. The royal family at Buckingham Palace joins in the historic event. London emerges at last from years of darkness, terror, and destruction. In New York's Times Square, and in every city, town, and hamlet, millions cheer V.E. Day. Freedom-loving people everywhere hail the final decisive victory over Germany.